What's up guys, this is the Rifleman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as Great Britain. So right off where we left off, we have a small force pushing out from Vilnius to attack this Russian army hunkering down in our church school. So let's take them out. And then this force, it likely won't be able, well it could pursue the Russians potentially because we do have Vilnius protected to the east from by Polish troops. I do really need to keep be careful in Europe because Prussia could turn on us as we do own Königsberg, which is like one of their um, victory conditions. But let's pick up our line infantry because right now it's quite a nice straight position. It's quite a nice, fairly open battlefield. Right now we want to focus our cavalry to support our infantry line. Yeah. Go. Lots of cavalry on the right flank. Got to keep an eye on those. Let's run the cavalry up. We'll run the infantry up. Walk the cavalry up. So we've got some guns you want to hit first. Well, we just need to push up. Close range. None of these are our named grenadier regiments. They are just the first, the second, and the third regiments. When you rename units, the, pre the unit, the name that it previously was, gets freed up. The brave British Grenadiers push up. So we do have lots of cavalry in these woods. So we need to be ready to dive into square. The 38th Regiment's getting... Oh, it's getting the hell shot out of it. We're hoping to push up close enough that we can start to fire volleys into the cannons. I hear a cavalry charge. Those guys. Right. Those guys drop into square. Okay, not you anymore. Actually, yes, you. You guys need to drop into square as well. You men are generally safe. Push up into the tree line. Push the cover up with it. Actually, no, don't. Drop into square. There we go. There. Cavalry doesn't really have anywhere to go because our, most of our... the bulk of our front line is... in a better position. Well, they're all in squares, so they can't push up. So these are Vibignone Strutzi. So these men have been... This Strutzi have been repelled, repelled. So let's push this line up. Let's keep these squares in position to try and deal with the 15th Regiment. Assuming they don't have... There we go. I was going to say, assuming they don't have too much life in them. So let's get... These men all out of square. Probably be something more like this. So push up aggressively. Cavalry can go up onto the right. I just want these guys in a position to be able to fire volleys into the cannons. It looks like we might need to dump some guys into square. Ready to deal with this. Put the flank. The company on the flank into square, just in case. You don't really have any good firing positions there, so let's do a little bit of manual, a little bit of a manual switcheroo. You guys get up into a position to engage the general. Those line infantry are okay. My cavalry counter charge or charge their regiment of horse. Yeah, I've got some sound bugs kicking in. Actually, no, don't. They're about to charge my square formation. The 45th are going to hold them off. Some men in a good position up on the rise, up here. So as long as this unit doesn't break square, which it has, but then if you immediately click to reform, it shouldn't be too bad. Firing lots of good shots into the general's bodyguard. But we want to keep the pressure 
on here. Or towards the centre, because that's where the... That's where the bulk of the... Well, the bulk of the enemy infantry hasn't actually committed yet. Whoa, Grenadiers. Grenadiers are in... Not in... Not, they don't have guard mode on. Cavalry still not really up to much, but just get my grenadiers back into formation. Let's see if I can. General's not charging. Their light cavalry may charge at any moment. Okay, let's. Uh, they intercepted my men, so let's run. You guys in to help them out. You guys both mob the general's bodyguard. Push this unit out in front of the wall, but into the the line. Massive Russian troops here. Possibilities are pretty neat if I can get a. If I can keep my my flank going. Yeah, my cavalry are winning there, so let's push this infantry around to try and get a, a surround going. These guys have got to really hold on, because right now they could get absolutely mobbed by a bunch of Russian troops. We could have stayed behind the wall, but we don't get any fire by... We don't... We lose our... Uh, platoon firing. Let's actually push this cavalry unit up. So now these men can just pour as much fire as they can into that block of troops. Especially as our line continues to grow. Through the woods. So these guys are going to be engaging the 1st Regiment of Militia, which is making their way through the woods. Someone's bodyguard's been defeated. So we haven't got them surrounded yet in a perfect formation, but we've got men being engaged from every direction. There's the 33rd. We should be able to start curling this formation up to about here to get a good, some good flanking shots. Once they knock out the 8th, like to get these infantry okay let's get them to attack the cavalry a little bit more actually let's bring them back now to hit gen actually no ignore the general if they charge my infantry that's fine my main focus is making sure i can catch as many men here as possible like if their general attempts to charge my My infantry, they're welcome to. It looks like the militia, unit one unit of militia is about to hit the flank. Okay, so I want... Damn, that, cavalry, that cavalry's come back. So you guys push up to here. Ignore the, the infantry there. You guys drop into square. These men are being hit by the militia. So some of these men may have to commit. You guys push up. You guys... Ch actually, don't charge down the cannons. Charge down... Yeah, actually, charge down the cannons. So these men can get a bit, a bit of a better surround off. These grenadiers probably want to hit the militia just to make sure they do die. You guys into square. You guys go square and charge down the fifth. We 
Okay, the militia are failing. They're probably going to rout from their own... Actually, some of my grenadiers are wavering. Come on, break the militia. If you can break the militia, then you can form your men up into a better position to actually uh, do some good. Okay. Speaking of doing good... One of you charge into the militia here. Another one of you run up and form position there. The militia have been knocked out. You men form your companies. Same with you. Some infantry have come back. You guys continue to charge down the 31st. So if these men route through my lines, we'll get some really good kills. But the 14th regiment are sticking around. Uh, this regiment of foot, go hit the 8th regiment. We're still doing good work against the Russians here. Yeah, you go hit the 8th and then you'll get to work clearing out the rest of these scallywags. So the 14th regiment, well, they're being engaged from every direction. You'll probably be enough to break the 8th. They are significantly depleted and most of their comrades are already fleeing. Sweet. Okay, let's just speed up time. We're gonna, definitely going to continue. Um, but right now I've only got two, two cavalry units and there's only so many men they can kill. I think it's probably better off I try and micromanage these guys. Eh, just micromanage them both. Still getting kills. They might not necessarily be as efficient because they've... Because lots of these troops have routed through that small village. The pathfinding is a bit more screwed up. You try and route murder the first murder. Well, that's what this is, I suppose. So back in the day, it would have just been good old-fashioned. Well, so I suppose it would still be frowned upon. Yes. Well, they're not surrendering, I suppose. They're fleeing. I don't know. I suppose it is a bit, bit murderous and barbaric, but there we are. They're not... Uh, it would actually be quite an interesting dynamic if on the battlefield units would surrender. Because then there might be a mechanic around, could you, do you then have to commit troops to manage the surrender and get them to the rear and disarm them? And it's probably a lot more effort than it's worth, really, but it's it's interesting. I suppose this, this is meant to be the point of them surrendering, because the flag is flashing, is literally flashing white. Um... Ah, okay. The only guy left is over. Oh. Bulkley's. Oh, not Bulkley's. Bulkley's regiment. Baranski. But Batyuski. Close victory. That wasn't close. Well, we lost a lot of men in it from a lot of regiments, but that wasn't close, I wouldn't say. There we go. We've only got 300 men left. Why not even chase them down? Immediately. Well, I suppose I should, especially as... Okay, run them to about here. This is assuming that Poland doesn't immediately stab us in the back. What I want to do is, as units get retrained here, Ready and they leave... Forward. Actually, let's put one unit in there. They go over to Riga, and then we can build up our strength to go hit St. Petersburg, which may, in turn, end up drawing us into war with Sweden. Things are going well. Right now we've got we've not got a huge amount of cash, but we've got a significant amount of things to spend it on. So let's just hit end turn. Aha! They're sallying at Falmouth. Uh, so I'm probably going to let them come to me, because I've got a significantly smaller army than they do. And I've got my artillery, so I want to make maximum use of my canister shot. 
and they are attacking me, so... I don't really... Well, they're attacking me, so they have to attack me, otherwise they will lose. Um, don't really want to risk... Ooh, this is a pretty cool position. Let's trundle some guns up here. Let's not worry about laying out a specific formation just yet. Just get them up on the hill. Let's do that. Let's put... Probably that. Is there some geography shenanigans at play? Um, in which case then maybe I want to deploy slightly further down the hill. We do want to have a fairly flat front to operate from. Let's do something like that and then let's pick up some Scots and Marines to hold the right flank. Actually we might be able to overmatch the right flank entirely. Let's get this, this far right flank to run. Then my remaining troops put them like so and then it's speed up time so it looks like they're going to do some just redeployment they are all spreading out into a line but at least my guns will be in quite a good quite a good position so it's just unlimber and get my guns to fire actually let's get the Get the light infantry out of that position on the in the line just so I can spread my troops out a bit better and spread you guys out like so okay realize I should have moved so I've recently got a new mouse and there's a risk because I think it's a bit more noisy A bit more noisy than my normal mouse, so there's a risk that it might make a bit more of a racket. So these men are actually in range to hit the fort, although I want to do something like that. Weirdly, having one elite regiment a shoot uh, battle with a militia regiment uh, isolated, they will take a lot more damage. So my guns can engage. One of the 300 units, 300 strong units of militia. So we're not quite in range for battle yet on the right flank. But I want to get my other gun in the position. Probably to aim at an other unit that's at 300. So the problem is, if I move our formation here on the right, I mean, I mean I've got to sweep them out because they've got lots of, well, they've got lots of, got some, they have some hidden units. But if I get out of position on the right flank, that throws me off a bit from my overall defensive position. Instead, do I just want to shoot the bejesus out of them? At least for now, because it looks like they're going to spend their time okay if they start redeploying then i'll push in and start sweeping up this flank because what normally happens is when they push well when they get into this sort of habit where they want to keep re uh, you know relocating their men yeah they've all done it okay let's take those three units, ship them over to the right flank, start to clean up start to clean up the enemy flank, okay yeah, so they've got their first shots off, we can start, we can, the, the aim is to try and sweep them up but the problem is, is they kill more men through easy kills if I had one unit 
So one unit means that this unit, this, if I sent one elite unit against the militia, the, my elite unit takes a disproportionate amount of casualties. What I need to do is send an actual detachment to do that. So if we send the detachment, we can route them, and then we can route them much quicker, and we lose that many fewer men. So if I even take... some of these guns to hit the 4th Regiment. And we're so close to the edge of the map, if they route, they route. It also means that losses, well, I was going to say, might be a bit more evenly distributed. But then we can push up, route the Buccaneers, and just start to push along their line from left to right. Okay, now wavering. Be glorious. There we go. So then we do something like this. I mean, you guys were... ...running somewhere else. Let's get you to hit those Buccaneers. These men could pour some fire into there. It does seem a bit like I'm putting a lot of the burden on these particular men. And that's right, I am. men reload. Fortunately, well, these guys should have pistols to shoot at me. I mean, the little canteens there. What you want is Okay, there we go. Now the enemy's kicked in. Now he knows something's not right. But now it means I've got quite a... I've got an advantage on one on a flank. I have no cavalry to chase them down, so there's a chance that some of these guys might come back. So let's get the guns starting to fight to hit the uh, militia. So let's pivot this flank. I can't quite... Tickle them with canister shot, quite yet. The idea is from aha, now we can. And as they get closer, then the 44th will start to provide fire support. unit of militia has been routed, a general has been killed. The Buccaneers have been routed, another unit might rout. You guys aim at the 11th. Still a chance they'll come back. But if they do, I'll pivot my troops to accommodate that. There we go. Now we've got them caught in quite a nice crossfire. Granted, I'm not using all my army to to effect, but right now these guys are staying fresh as these reinforcements come in. There it goes. The canister shot. Tore the backside out of the 3rd Regiment of Militia. You guys aim at the 11th. my line just pours fire into the enemy. There we go. I could have done a full frontal assault, but uh, where does that get me? Apart from, well right now like they had to attack, otherwise I would just roll up their flank, which it looks like I'm still in a fairly good place to do. Then I can get back to a normal fighting position. If I had cavalry I'd absolutely mow them down. But here we are. So Roger's Rangers that are currently hidden, they are going to pop up. Pour a volley into the 10th Regiment of Militia. See, so is the General's Bodyguard, are they, have they 
sometimes the cavalry get kind of obsessed with aiming for the only light infantry they can. It's the only thing they can kill, so they get obsessed with trying to kill it. Okay, now we've got them on the run. And they are unbalanced. Advance, roll up the flank. Eighth Regiment of Militia. Musketeers, not firing with advanced drills. Pushing up aggressively. But yeah, their army is breaking pretty rapidly. So sometimes the, these infantry units aren't the most optimally laid, laid, uh, most optimally laid out. Like so, in this case, this unit here is the weak link because they are laid out to provide, to provide maximum firepower. The Scots, are, no, the Scots aren't because they've got four rank, four ranks deep. Uh, this unit, yeah, you're still doing round shot. Aim at the African musketeers. Just, just roll them up. Ooh. Again, just press N. Don't try and shift and move forward, otherwise you'll get those stuttery shapes. Okay, these guys, not, sh not shapes, frames. There goes the 13th. You can keep blasting them with canister shot. Got some buccaneers on the flank. Let's pivot my line infantry to keep an eye on them. Or my light infantry, rather. I mean, it's very much overkill now to start doing stuff like this, but... Eh. And you've noticed, I've actually, well, maybe you'll have noticed, I've swapped out my mouse, so I've got a lot fewer uh, right-click stutters. Yep. So the only enemy left are these buccaneers. And Roger's rangers is having a pretty good crack at trying to convince them to go away. Go on, lad. I had a little sneeze. Caught me unawares. Okay. Colonial militia is trying to come back. The buccaneers have been pushed away. 7th Regiment of Militia. Aim. Switch my artillery to focus fire on them. They've been routed. As have the buccaneers. Good stuff. Enemy repulsed with very low, well, relatively low costs for our men. So that's gone. Good God, 84. That's really good. Right, so I'm going to get £9,000. Well, yeah, it'd be £9,000. Not a lot <laughs> to run an empire on. I've lost a few there. I need to do some selective replenishment. That Russian stack is probably going to go around and do some rather annoying raiding. Yeah, they're not going to raid. They're going to wander back towards the back towards Vilnius. Yeah, I need to make some strategic investments. Which probably means bolstering my forces in Eastern Europe. Uh, North Africa's pretty safe for now. Maybe in in Cuba that would be also a good place to spend some money to secure the island because right now we've got uh, we've got some raiding troops on it. Also got the, f the pirates doing some annoying things. Yeah, enemy raider there. So Cuba, this force here. You're actually in pretty good nick. Spend a bit of money. Actually, what do you need to be fully replenished? Not very much. Let's go over 
to the east. You guys can auto Mr. Apraxin, because his army is pretty much destroyed. You guys then go back to Vilnius. We can rebuild the farm. We can build this iron workshop. Let's build this farm. Let's... So who's depleted here? It's your cavalry. And then let's pick second Royal Welsh. Be replenished. They are like they will likely lose some experience. To be honest, I could merge a bunch of these together and try and have a few, well, a couple of very highly experienced units. But actually, let's actually let's just try and pick up the let's try pick up the most up to strength units first. Repair the church school. Repair this building. We've got a gentleman here who is going to march back to Memel. Is he a new one? He is a new chap. Uh, maybe let's get a sloop. Recruit a sloop at Memel to transport him over ourselves. And that leaves us with 2,000 mighty pounds, which is probably best spent here in the Americas. Meagy yield. Ooh. Tax income's pretty nice. Can't build roads, but we can upgrade some farms. Actually, we could do some selective uh, selective replenishment here, because this is another army we can send to try and actually earn us money. How much do you need to replenish all your men? Two thousand. Actually, let's not pick you. Let's pick someone who's a bit less depleted. So I still want about 500 ish to repel it to rebuild or to build a farm so we're still at roughly the same amount you men are nearly in a good enough shape to push out and knock out this small force here and then that will be Cuba secured and then my eyes will turn towards probably the pirate islands to finish them off you guys continue to siege oh, actually do we Actually, let's just attack Falmouth because right now we can take we can take the city, and that'll earn us some good tax. Well, good tax, probably about hundred maybe. Um, but tax nonetheless. Don't turn your never turn your nose up at up at income. I mean, unless well, I definitely did turn my nose up at income when I was when I was younger. Mum would say, "I've got you a job." No, no, she wouldn't say, I've got you a job. She'd say, you should get a job and do this. And I'd say, I don't want to do that. And she would go, well, then you won't have any money to spend. And I'm there thinking, mum, I'm 12. I don't have anything I want. <laughs> At least nothing that can wait until... I can't wait until Christmas and birthdays. Anyway. God, I'm turning into... I'm turning into a bloody Lindy Beige. As entertaining as he is, he does love a ramble. Right. Push my men up. They've got... Very little to stop us. Here's the town. The territory that used to be ours anyway is going to be brought back into the fold once more. Fear not, friends. Your liberation is at hand. Ring the bells for the British are coming. Second foot guards. The marines are pushing up. Hello, it's the general. Rogers Rangers, down that officer. Yes, bugle. Let him know he's about to get his head blown off. Ooh, he took down a number of his staff. The general, however. <laughs> you can still hear the bullets going ping. Oh, I got him! <laughs> nice. Uh, mean meanwhile, the battle is happening. Well, battle, quote unquote. Pick new targets for the guns. Huzzah! The officer has been killed, they've lost their drummer. Militia trying to charge us, but they don't even have bayonets. The fools. The 
13th and the 17th. Actually, I think I might independently rename these. I might independently rename them after this battle. Buccaneers! Just speed up time, because they're going to get... They're going to wander into... Hey! More Buccaneers. I mean, I doubt we'll need any more men than that. It would be interesting to have the concept of supply in Total War. Because in reality, the supply and issue of things like ammunition and food and rum... And, well, in my head, it's particularly ammunition would be interesting. Because right now, you can get a, these guys get a lot of shots off. But significantly more shots off than I think would be strictly accurate. I think it was something like, I don't know, the number in my head is something like 80 cartridges a piece, and I think in each rank probably fires, each individual rank probably fires more than 80 shots in a game, in, a, in like a proper battle. There you go, the enemy have been repulsed. Ah, didn't mean to right click there, but there we go, it's a heroic victory for us. Falmouth is secured with minimal fuss. And then let's spend whatever cash we have on fixing them. So what I wanted to do is pick them most. Okay, so if you guys have seen, well, in, a red sharp and also no, a bit of history. Got the 78th regiment of foot and the 74th regiment of foot, which I'm pretty sure were the regiments of foot that were important in things like the Battle of Assay, and were just pretty were badasses. So I want to have the 74th and the 78th. Got to bear in mind that you can actually get more troops from Scotland's that are unique. So, I mean, even though now it's just showing us the basic stuff, you can actually get. Uh, you can actually get uh, Scottish Grenadiers and lots of other really good stuff. But let's actually let's go back to Europe. Okay, let's hit end turn. I do want to push on St. Petersburg. If I can push on... Ooh, I don't like that one French unit going for a wander. I mean, it probably won't get up to much mischief beyond uh, actually doing a bit of raiding. If I can take St. Petersburg, then that removes the last, French, uh, the last Russian port of the Baltic. Right now, we don't really have a good navy to do blockades. Do you know what wants peace? You know what, Genoa? Let's. I'm not worried. I don't want to be at war with you, Genoa. God, the Ottomans have pushed up and taken Crimea as well. So the Russians, the, Ru the Russians are under attack from the Germans, the Brits, the Turks. Well, I definitely want to get in there and gobble up as much territory as I can. No, pirates, leave me alone. Plymouth is blockaded. We've still got a pretty good amount of money. Let's go back over. Not India. Although India is a mess. So my agent embark him aboard ship. Let's get him back to Blighty. Should probably upgrade Oxford, but right now we've got a pretty good pretty pressing need. For our men, for our, uh... Going ashore. Okay. We've got a pretty pressing need of our ca to use our cash elsewhere. Port located Grand, Grand Bahamas. Okay, you men are going to march out to engage them in due course. Let's get some basic farm upgrades. They do at least provide a bit of extra... Uh, region wealth, like a good lower band. I mean, the, I know the trade is useful in the short term, but right now, actually, you can export through Lower Louisiana. You don't yet have a, a limit. I might get a port down there, actually. It's quite a strategic upgrade. Is it Boston? 
So who are you actually? Native bowmen. Send a detachment to chase them down. Backed up with some militia from Quebec. You men get a fur trapper. A mine there we could upgrade. Let's make sure we upgrade replenishing this army as well. Hop back to Europe. We'll still replenishing, as are the men over here, so let's get a couple more. Being replenished 700. See, the replenishing men is expensive. I don't want to repair that because it's too close to the frontier. And it's a bit of a risk. Especially when I've already got things I can upgrade. Farms I can build in safer regions. Well, I've got 700 cash. Yeah, there's a farm. At some point I need to go on a road building. Average yield, average yield, average yield, low, high, but it's already upgraded. Yep, average yield it is. No, wait, that's not you. There it is. Got a new tobacco plantation at Lower Louisiana. At some point I do want, them to, want to march them to go invade Santa Fe, although it's not a very wealthy region, so I don't want to spend too much money on that expedition. Can the forces here at Havana march out? They can, and they don't immediately hate us. And it looks like they are happy about this. Yeah, separation of powers. The lower classes do benefit from that. So let's take Henry Dayton, march them out, and hit the, hit the plantations. Let's clear them out. Let's bring them, make them into a financial center for our empire. Oh, just a second, guys. I'm getting a phone call. Sorry for that. Uh, I don't normally answer... Uh, calls when I'm recording but it was I've only I've just got around to getting my COVID jab and I'll say got around <laughs> I booked it as soon as I was able to but I'm fairly low down on the, on the list of priorities and it was my parents asking if I was okay which is nice uh, and I feel great I, you know, this is going to be way out of date <laughs> when this finally gets published um, I'm going to be jabbed probably I think this probably video goes out a couple of weeks after I'll have had my jab because I'm recording I'm recording videos for a period where I'm away I'm visiting family uh, A go get jabbed and B uh, I made a bigger deal of it of getting jabbed in my head than it was in reality because I've not actually had a jab for anything in a, in a while so you sit there and think oh it was painful it hurts you go, well, yeah, but that was ages ago. Your mind likes to play tricks on you. Get jabbed. The sooner, you, the sooner we're jabbed, the sooner we're all out of it. Okay, so let's push my... <laughs> I went through all that without explaining, my, <laughs> without explaining my strategy at all. Because they are Native American factions, I need to be a bit cagey when it comes to advancing, but at the same time... They aren't Native American uh, factions, so they don't get access to the most scary units. I didn't even bring my general into the mix. So I mean, I would guess that some of them are back here. <laughs> Probably get my artillery to sit here sniping regiment foot. It's, it's annoying we've got more sound bugs again. It seems. I don't know, I can go through a period of recording a whole bunch of episodes and never have a problem. And then I'll just boot load it up one day and it will go, ah, you've got sound problems. And doesn't help, it's raining, which makes things look terrible anyway. So charge my yeomanry into the buccaneers. The AI has probably stacked. Their hidden unit, there they are, they're stacked on one on top of another. Charge down the buccaneers. There we go, they've suddenly, like, you're like, uh, unearthing a pile of ants. They suddenly all go, ah! 
Push up, push up, push up. I mean, that one, thing I didn't, one thing I didn't want these guys to do is run into the spikes. So let's keep my cavalry moving around. Get my pikemen down here. Although it looks like these guys are going to have to charge the buccaneers. Smash my cavalry straight into their lines where applicable. Where's my pikes? Bringing up the rear because I left them behind. Let's get my cavalry around the flank as well. These native bow auxiliary will likely fall fairly quickly. Charge these men to the native warrior auxiliary. Don't let them bunch up. You guys can actually stay here and pour fire into their flank instead. Be careful of the spikes there, cavalry. You guys get around the flank of these native war auxiliary, then charge. Bring the yeomanry round. My pikes are going to smash straight into the centre here, where the bulk of their troops are, all, uh, are uh, located. My yeomanry are going to sit here chasing down the general's bodyguard. You guys are now going to actually charge in from one flank. Now the pikes are in. It should be a fairly simple matter to chase them down. Because auxiliary pikemen are great, but... Oh, well. Native troops are great, but you know what's even better? Pikemen. So my cavalry are going to get bogged down sooner or later. There we go, we've got the native warriors surrounded. Let's turn off our artillery. So I'll have lost more men than I would have liked in this manoeuvre. You guys especially, you guys stop shooting. It's in guard mode off. Charge them all, charge all these guys through this combat straight into the native bow auxiliary. They're sat there reacting to skirm with, it's with skirmish mode, but this one man is enough to tag them. And here comes, here comes the drummer or the bugler. Leap the barrier. He's made into combat. Get my cavalry start to chase down some of their men. One of these units needs to go over and hit these native warrior auxiliary. They're really... They're doing a number on my men. Okay, I'm shuffling forward in super, super fast formation. But we want to knock them out because they have... They're a raiding army. So we don't want them to uh, stick around. The seventh are charging into the rear of the native war auxiliary, which is probably going to make them a bit upset. Now, don't worry about the general's bodyguard. Go off the native warriors. So it's not a question of killing, killing men with my infantry. I'll just leave them. Leave them be continue because I do not want these devils getting up to no good I want you guys to chase down that native Bowman auxiliary you chase them down chase them down. You chase them down or you're probably not going to get to them. Let's make sure you run my, run my men manually around my infantry lest they run in and kill them all. Uh, wrong unit. It's an infantry unit.
Come on. There we go. So that is the main force in Cuba knocked out. They have 100 men remaining, which they're going to flee. My army can take a little bit of replenishment, then they're going to push up. Then we're going to build, rebuild these plantations. Right now we're exporting nothing, though. Plantations constructed. Okay, right. Ten grand next turn. I mean, I'm going to try fight that. Because why not? I mean, if I lose it, that'll be a bummer, but it's not. It's just annoying, really. <laughs> At the very least, if we do damage to them now, we will... Well, I won't... What I'm not going to do, what I'm definitely not going to do, is... Okay, hold on. Can I... Okay, let's try this. My men are going to stay hidden. You guys may as well fire explosive shells. My men are going to stay hidden to the last possible minute, and then I'm going to open up at close range. Fire some volleys, and then bayonet charge. If they stay toe for toe, my men won't last. As soon as my men become unhidden. I want to unleash three volleys and then charge. Oh man, I definitely didn't lay them out well enough to do that. Three volleys and then charge. close mor a mortar shot is affecting everyone. At the very least, they're wavering. <laughs> Get my mortar crew involved as well. <laughs> Get my mortar crew actually around the flank. like that to try and kill we killed their general my general's dead my guys are winning I suppose they are bowmen at the end of the day although we're now unhappy we're technically winning but it depends on whose morale is better and I suspect theirs may be better although we do outnumber them quite significantly They're now winning. Hurrah! <laughs> oh. What a... <laughs> Alright, okay. <laughs> Militia don't need to be recruited anymore. Oh well, they'll still join the men. They'll still join the army. They will be useful to act as garrisons wherever my armies make landfall. So the good 13 colony is going to help protect Boston Harbour. Barbary State's going to be the Barbary States, and they're going to be up to no good. Let's see what they actually do. I mean, I'm not at war with them, so they don't want to do me much trouble. The Ottomans have consolidated the Italian peninsula. So they'll be drastically attempting to convert the population to prevent rebellion. Ten thousand. Okay, so you men. Join this force. March south. Let's replenish you. 
Okay, lots of good farms have been built. Let's upgrade this Iron Master's works. Well, that's quite a large investment. Let's rebuild our Grenadier contingent in Vilnius. Got a couple more units that are rebuilt. And our clansmen. Oh, actually, I actually forgot about keeping them happy. Recruit two more units of line. Actually, let's recruit Dragoons to act as a garrison. I'm going to definitely do some road upgrades, but as you can see, I've already spent loads of my money. Probably needs to be spent on things like basic roads. Basic roads, farms, cheap upgrades. Because right now, I've got... I can spend money everywhere. Okay, so this force... Auto resolve the remnants of that army I've just fought. You men can replenish as much as you can before marching down Santiago to Cuba. We don't have any money to re rebuild any of those units or rebuild any of those buildings. Yeah, the militia recruiting in New France. The pirates are being problematic. One more turn till we get separation of powers, but I should really have gone for wealth of nations. I am concerned about this navy, although I could ask them, well, I could do something about it. I should start to really pick up the odd fourth rate here in the Baltics while I can. I could consolidate my front here a bit, but I want to keep some troops here in case Poland decides to betray me. Not Poland. Prussia. In case the Prussians try to betray me. God, the Ottomans really cleaned out that pirate fleet. Yeah, the army I've got in Georgia, that's my plan. I want to do some... Well, do I want to do island hopping, or do I want to do... Hmm. Do I want to send them down to New Andalusia? To knock out a major New Spaniard city? Or do I go straight for Mexico City? Which would be a big task. But if I knocked out Mexico City, I could try and make peace while still having a fairly... contiguous landmass, if that's even the right word. I would need to knock out the Pueblo Nations depending on their political allegiances. I think the Cuba garrison is definitely going to go around knocking out the pirates. Another rake. Although, actually, it's probably, it would probably be a good idea to take both these fleets. Heh heh heh, ship sail on water. <laughs> Okay, let's get our rakes no one aboard. Get these guys over to Memel and let's get them to infiltrate the front line. Because since my spy was killed in St. Petersburg. No, oh, that's my militia I want to send. Okay, let's send another rake up to St. Petersburg. Let's send another, my other rake. Straight over to Moscow. Let's keep you yes. in Memel. Trade route raided. Kel Surprise. Henry Dayton. You're going to go clear out. <laughs> General's bodyguard and a cannon. By the left. Rebuild the port. You men can replenish. We have a, it's a lot of money to replenish, but let's rebuild you. And you. Let's put a church school on Cuba, start to spread the glorious religion of Protestantism. Let's get some basic roads built. Now that's going to be quite a big boost for uh, of Cuban, or for Cuban, in of, of Cuban income? For Cubans. Uh, let's build... There, it's that one militia unit that's costing you guys, keeping you guys depleted. Okay, got a bit of money. Let's do some more cheap farm upgrades. Actually, cotton or tobacco. 
they're both equal. Well, I'm going to go for tobacco because that's what we're producing less of. There we go. Okay, good. Intellectual advance, separation of powers. You want to go down to wealth of nations. Wealth of nations. To be honest, this entire right track is great when it comes to earning earning money in the long game. Because you, I mean, you're increasing unhappiness, but the bonus to trade trade route income, the bonus to the growth of trade route in income is great, especially for Britain. Plus, eight percent of town wealth in the region is great because wealthier towns produce more money, and just a flat wealth bonus of six percent. What's not to like there? You got some upgrades. Cool. Um, but because I have chopped the episode and I don't quite remember where I am, I think I'm going to end the episode there because I'm roughly at an hour, I think, kind of. I'm in the ballpark anyway. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Great Britain. Cheers, everyone.